Well, Thanksgiving's done. Not American Thanksgiving, the good one. Now that I've pissed off all the Americans, let's look at a VCR. So this is a pretty basic VCR. This is the VMT 285 by RCA. And uh, yeah, there's the model or the manual. And this is so basic. I believe this was the most basic uh, VCR that they sold. This is the bottom of the line. Very simple, but it's in very good shape. Usually these doors on the side are, are missing. Uh, people I bought it from. Oh, that's cute. People I bought it from apparently owned it new since the late 80s. Very nice people. I actually went to test it out and it didn't work. Of course, you know, it's, it's to be expected. And I thought maybe the belts were bad. Uh, it turns out there was a piece of metal that had fallen inside and was jamming up one of the guides and the little arm that controls the uh, tension band. So I pulled that out, it seemed to play fine. Just the remote, you get a better image of that. It's a pretty simple remote. Channel, search, so separate controls for visual search and fast forward rewind. You can play around with that later. Oh, old batteries. And it looks like they're dead. Oh, no, there's a bit of life left in them. Give them the old spin, but they should really be replaced. So this is actually in the same model year as the VMT 400 I did. I think it was, might've been the first video I uploaded. That was the also Hitachi made RCA that had three video heads and it had special effects. So it had all the digital special effects. This one is, I believe it's a two head. We can open up and see. Uh, but first I just wanna pop a tape in and see if it works right out of the gate. All right, power on. The only thing that indicates it's on, I should probably shut this light off on the front here, is the indicator for the RF modulator set to line right now, uh, speed set to SLP. So I'll flip this to hear the tuner. Yep. Let's uh, put a tape in. Perhaps it was a bad belt as well. Definitely unhappy. Okay, let's pop it open. All right, just popping the cover off, but there's a sticker on the bottom I wanted to show. So it looks like this was serviced on, uh, what was that, March 23rd, 1995? This is kind of interesting. Your VCR has been tested by state-of-the-art test equipment. In our constant effort to provide 100% customer satisfaction, a servo analyzer test has been done on your VCR. This test is to check the performance of the circuits that are vital to the good operation of your VCR. The test results are printed in percentage of error for each circuit that was tested. So servos locked 0.8%, capstan speed error 0.08%, capstan jitter, drum speed error. There's no drum jitter. I've never seen that before. Doesn't even have the name of a repair shop. It's just a sticker like that. Anyway, I almost guarantee it's going to be these belts, with these Hitachis. So I play again. That feels like it's binding against something though. Like these don't feel that bad. And this is very difficult to turn. So does anyone see a problem? Bueller, Bueller, this is completely out of alignment. 
This is jammed up in here. This should be on the other side, I think. This is all out of whack. This is probably, there's a, that piece of metal was sitting down here and had was binding up against everything. So I suspect it's jammed this up and the gear has skipped or something. Hmm. All right, since I am fairly certain of this one, it's a timing issue. I've grabbed the RCA time-lapse VCR. I did a video on a while ago. As this one, the mechanism is timed correctly. So I can use this as a reference while I figure out what gear or whatever has skipped. Because I don't want to go into here blind or may never get it back to where it needs to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this into the same home position. I'm going to have to look for an indicator or marker as this one. We'll go from there. Just as a side note, you can completely tell these are the same era of VCR. Look at the molded plastic here and here. And obviously this is a different board because this is a different machine. But overall, they're basically the same VCR. And here's the top side, side by side. Now what's interesting is I originally said this would have been 87, 88. But um, this being a model year 87 VCR would have been 86, 87. So it could be that, I think I remember I said in that one that they probably sold this VCR for many years after it was built because, you know, commercial stuff doesn't get updated as often. But it looks to me like it's built off of the model year chassis that the VMT series was used on the RCAs. Anyway, just a side note. Well, it turned out all the gears below are timed properly, which is a good thing I was able to look at this before I started messing with stuff. It makes sense. I can't see any of these gears skipping. It looks like what happened, and this is weird because this worked when I walked away with it, is um, this you can sort of push either way, and it, I was able to kind of nudge it while moving this one back into the correct position. So now, let's take a look. I have it on its side because the loading belts are still weak. So I need to probably need to help it along. There we go. Just gave it a helping hand. And now we have playback. So now if I hit stop. So part of this is belts, but this is this black grease that doesn't look original. This looks like it was added at some point. And I know Mitsubishi has used this in the mid nineties, this being serviced in 95, they probably put this grease in here. This stuff is sticky it turns like it feels almost like a sticky gluey goop. So I'm going to go in to eject here. I'm going to have to go in here and clean all this crap out because I suspect part of the problem with this is that grease is just nasty. All right. So I've cleaned almost pretty much all the black grease that I could get it and I've replaced it and it seems to move a lot better but it seems to catch midway and it's when something engages in the cam gear. And uh, I'll show you what I mean. See right there where it binds for a second. And at the end here, I need to help it along and watch what happens when I hit stop. right there. It's really fighting hard. And even when I manually put this through the paces, I can really feel the drag. For comparison, here's what it should look like. Let's try that again.
All right. And we hit stop. Still is a little bit unhappy in that one spot, but oh, you know what? I'll take it. All right. Let's uh, let's go through the features of this. It's a very very simple unit. Um, tape in indicator. This front display has seen better days. Let's try and bring that down. Wow, is that ever dim now that I look at it. The camera doesn't really want to focus on it. Uh, we've got a tape speed indicator, SP, LP, SLP. I feel like there is a uh, missed opportunity to just use those three letters there. Your uh, line indicator. I can switch to the tuner that's much brighter. Now, if I go and hit clock, so I'm looking at the buttons over here. Uh, this was my tape speed switch. So if I hit clock, everything is set on here. So I can hit uh, set and then enter when I'm done. Set, enter, set, enter, clock is set basically just these two buttons here. Now program, you can see there's two different programs to choose from. Very, very, very simple. And then clear, I guess, just gets you out of whatever you're in. There's a tuner line switch. If I go to tuner. Now, I believe the way this works is very similar to uh, other RCAs. Normal and select. So select will take me through all the possible channels. If I go to normal, these are only the channels that have been added. Which looks to be just 2 to 13. But if I go to select, that brings me to all the cable channels. Oh, the focus on here is just atrocious. What if I get more light? What's that L on the side there? That. Okay, so that's when I have select on. Okay, I'll select band. Oh! Well, that's interesting. So if I took band, see that's VHF low, VHF high, cable, and UHF. And then I've got this tune control here. Let me hook up my. Uh, my modulator. All right, I have my trusty CRT television. Let's try and tune a channel. So I've got the preset, I guess you'd call it, set to 14. Um, the band is set to VHF low, again, you have low, high, cable, and UHF. Uh, and pressing that button there, I'm just gonna press and hold tune and let's see what we get. Turn the volume up a little bit. Now what should happen is when it reaches the end of a band, it should switch over to the next one. There it goes. So there was nothing on VHF. Oh yeah, you know what? Because this has separate UHF and VHF connections in the back and I have it hacked up to UHF. So let's just skip to UHF and give it a go. Oh, I got something there. Go back. Why is that really hard to see? It looks like a ghosting of CBC television on UHF. I think that's just a byproduct of uh, the way it's hooked up. That's not actually on UHF. Keep going. There we go. Looks like my Simpsons modulator has crashed. It's 
Nothing there. Let's keep going. That is a real slow tuner. Some digital, digital. Digital. Oh. That channel works. Anyway, that's just playing with the tuner on this set. These are a real pain in the butt. You have to like manually tune each one in. Um, where most VCRs from this era would have had like a PLL tuner, like phase loop lock or quartz or whatever, where it locks into the correct frequency every time. I can turn AFT on and off or something. This thing is just ridiculous. You have to tune each one. So here, I'll tune this in and then go to normal. So that one's been added. To turn the camera down so we can see it. So 14, 13, and then if I go back to select, turn the volume up. If I hit add, erase see now I've erased 13 and I can go through and erase channels this is pretty common among RCAs if it was muted when you're in select mode then uh, then it means it's deleted so I go to normal see I've deleted those Anyway, I don't know why I always like to play with a tuner on these old things. It's just neat. That's really all you have though. You have your clock and program controls, tuner line, tape speed. This is all your channel programming, your tracking. Uh, I know it looks like there's a line there, but that's just a reflection. This is actually the middle right here. And then your front controls. Express record, so if I were to press that, obviously it won't let me because there's a pre-recorded tape in there. You can turn your modulator on and off there. Uh, counter, counter reset, no memory, nothing like that. And I can go and grab my remote, hit play. Grab the remote, hit play. Might need to help this thing out a little. Oh, no, nope, there it goes. I'll turn this light off so we can see the movie. Pause, standard two head pause. Let's see how well the other things work. Fast forward. That's actually really decent. Rewind. Yeah. Doesn't sound happy. Oh, it actually shut off. Did I not have another VCR that did this? Another Hitachi? If you put it into one of the scan modes, it would flip out and then shut off. I swear, I remembered something like that. Anyway. We'll be right back. Try and play again. <laughs> Fast forward. Yeah, pressing and holding. And if I hit rewind, it flips its shit. I'm not touching it. It's doing this on its own. Oh! Ha <laughs> ha! 
bunch is the tape up in there? Huh. I think it might have been that weird Hitachi I had with the detachable front remote. I think that one might have been the one that freaked out and rewind. That must be kind of a common issue. Eh, whatever. Not like any of this matters. Let's try regular rewind. Oh yeah! Now that sound in regular rewind, I will show you why that is. This belt. Look at that. High quality. It's not even printed on there, it's just a sticker. And of course we can't forget the basic of basic remotes. So you can change channels, you can fast forward. Let's put the counter on there. Rewind. Oh, now it's trying, yeah. Must have got that belt a little happier, you can hear it squealing. RF modulator, search, so if I hit play, now we're playing a movie, and if I hit fast forward, oh, okay, and if I hit search, what? What the hell's the point of having two buttons to do the same thing? They don't, they don't even lock on. I have to wait for it to do its thing. So yeah, you have these search buttons that don't do anything unless you're in play. And you have the rewind and fast forward buttons that, that obviously do rewind and fast forward. But when you're playing, they all do the same thing. What? makes no sense. Before someone says, oh, that must not be the original remote, this is the manual for this VCR. That is the original remote. That's just wacky. Now with regards to this manual, I don't think there's any value in going too into it into too much detail. I mean, this is the most basic of basic VCRs. Got your antenna connections, general installation, this is like cookie cutter to what most of these had. Uh, here's some neat stuff regarding the tapes and the speeds. So RCA was still using their own part numbers. T60 was a VK125, T120 VK250, T160 VK330. Oh! It actually tells you the counter. It tells you the linear. Okay, that's cool. That, I was not expecting that. I've always just looked at these linear counters as sort of a log reference with no connection to reality, but it looks like RCA actually documented what that counter did when you recorded stuff. All the buttons we looked at on the front what to do. Oh yeah, tuning, presetting the tuner. I already went through all that. Okay, here we go. So it shows the tuner band. So band L, yeah, two to six. Band high includes those 99s. And then seven to 13. Oh yeah, and includes the cable channels. So it should be 14 to 22. Yeah, and then these guys. Then 23 to 36, and then 14 all the way up to 83 on UHF. So, despite this having all those extra channels when I was playing around, I thought this maybe went up to cable channel 70. Nope, 36. Very common for low end VCRs in this time period. Remote controlling, first recording and playback, special effects and features. You got pause picture search. 
That's it. That's all you get. More quick references, connecting a camera. What is this? Express recording, programming the timer, timer recording. What is this? RKA service. RCA, Ray, go to highest station, press select and hold, add, press channel up and down and keep adding. <laughs> Good to know. Optional accessories, cables, switches, a splitter slash combiner and a head cleaning cassette. Troubleshooting, index, and the specifications. Very basic. Yeah, I mean, there's really not much to this unit. So here's all the VCRs from the model year. There's this one here, the VM285 we just looked at. 295 was identical, but uh, black. 385 and 390 have a slightly different styling. I had the 385 years ago when I was younger. The controls are on a nice flip down door on the bottom, which is a little bit better. I think the remote was the same. 391, different styling again. This is very similar to the styling of the VMT 400. I forgot also to mention that the 300 series all had three heads. 395, better remote. This is stereo, which is kind of neat. You see the little VU meters there. VMT 400, that's when you get into special effects, but that one is mono. VMT 590, I had this one when I was young as well. I bought it at a garage sale for some stupid low amounts and I was blown away by five heads. I'd never heard of five heads. And what was cool is this had a label on the back labeled CBWT or property of CBWT. Now CBWT is the call letters for the CBC station in Winnipeg. So this was used in some capacity many moons ago, probably in the early 90s at the CBC, maybe in an office, boardroom, something like that. Uh, and then someone, I guess, bought it. Maybe they worked there and they took it home and I bought it from them. Wish I still have that one. That was pretty cool. 595, I believe that's five head, but stereo. 597, that one is uh, stereo as well. Don't know what the difference between this one and this one is. Probably nothing. And then these HF models, which are hi-fi. So that was RCA's offering in the 86-87 model year. And this one's the lowest end. Screw it. Let's steal the good belt from the time-lapse VCR. This one's in nicer condition. Just the tracking. Plays just fine. Yeah, so SLP plays just fine on it. Let's see with that belt replaced. Oh yeah, much better.